We welcome you to this time of worship. We also welcome all who are worshiping with us online or on their phones. We are glad you are with us. Here at First Congregational Church, we celebrate that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Please join us now in worship. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-loving God, you have given the human race Jesus Christ, our Savior, as a model of humility. He fulfilled your will by becoming man and giving his life on the cross. Help us to bear witness 
to you by following his example of suffering and make us worthy to share in his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
So we have Holy Thursday and Good Friday coming up, then of course Easter, which we're super excited about this year. In the meantime, we're going to end our session this morning with a song called Christ is Risen. The words are super, super easy on the chorus. It's one of the reasons we picked it. So if you can at home or wherever you are, please join along with us. sin remain inside the light of inward shame we fix our eyes upon the cross and run to him who showed great love and bled for us free bled for us Christ is risen from the dead, trampling over death by death. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. Christ is risen from the dead, we are one with him again. Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave. to invite all those who are young or young at heart to pay attention. Also, all of you adults out there, listen up. We have an amazing preschool program here on our church grounds. We have the Hearts and Hands program. And I have the privilege to meet with them once a month to share a story in God's word. Today, we got to talk about Palm Sunday, and they helped me with my children's message, in which we have recorded for you to view at home right now. I hope you enjoy. So I have a question for you guys. What? Have any of you ever seen a parade before? No. No? no. no. Do you, I did. You did? Yeah. And, and what I is, did. Okay, and what is a parade you know, like? No, you know I found the tutor show. Is, is a parade super I exciting? I saw Santa at the parade. You saw, you saw Santa at a parade? So we see 
It's like a parade goes down the middle of a street, and we get to sit on the sides and watch it. And it's super exciting and fun, and sometimes it can be loud. And today, we're going to talk about a special parade, a parade that people had for Jesus. <gasps> How exciting is that? And it's actually called Palm Sunday. Can you guys say Palm Sunday? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. And that's an exciting time. And we're going to talk about that story. But I know of another exciting time. Have you guys been opening Easter eggs in class? No. You have? Guess what I have with me? Uh-oh, where'd it go? <laughs> Look at Miss Amy, almost lost it. So we have our special Easter egg today. Should we see what's inside it? Okay, you ready? What? A star. A star? Yeah. yeah. What else is this? Wonder. Star. It's a whistle. It's a whistle. So you know what? I have Charlie. Or I have some. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry, buddy. I have special baskets. And I'm going to show you what's inside them. Teachers, would you mind handing one out so everybody gets to have one? Okay, so pick whichever one you want. And this is going to be yours to keep. Because I need you guys to help me. Because a parade, it's a celebration. It's exciting. It's a fun time. So I need you guys to all help me. But when you get yours, I'm going to need you to lay it in your lap. Okay? So I need you to lay it in your lap. And at, when I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a special word. And that's when you get to play with it. Okay? Do you think you can help me today? Take anyone. Anyone. So we've got some fun things. Oh, can we sit in our lap? I know this is really hard because these are so exciting. Super fun. So I'm going to have you, I'm going to say a word. Ready? Can you listen? Oh, we got to listen. Ready? Hosanna. Can you say that? Hosanna. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. This is such an exciting day in the life of the church. Jesus is coming. This is so fun. So every time I say Hosanna, I want you to either wave your horn in the air and say Hosanna, Hosanna, or I want you to blow your whistle or just blow your horn, whichever you prefer. So if you want to say Hosanna, Hosanna, or blow your whistle, that's what you can do. Should we practice? So when I say what word? Hosanna! Hosanna! Oh, you're ready to go. Hosanna! Hosanna! Woohoo! All right, now stop. Set it in your lap. Oh my gosh, you guys are amazing listeners. Oh my goodness, you teachers, you guys are amazing. Wow, in your lap. All right, now we're going to tell a story. And every time I say Hosanna, you're going to blow your horn and say Hosanna, right? Again, so only when I say it. You ready? Okay. Turn your listening ears on again. Here we go. The people were excited. A parade was coming down the street. But this wasn't just any parade. This was a celebration for Jesus. And Jesus was riding in Jerusalem on a donkey, not a horse. And as Jesus passed by people, they shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna! Woohoo! Hosanna! All right, pause. Many of the people knew that Jesus was a very special person. They thought he was special because he did so many good things for other people. And they have been waiting for a very long time to see him. The people took off their coats and they laid them on the ground for Jesus and the donkey he was riding to walk on so they didn't have to walk in the dirt how cool is that and as they passed by as jesus passed by the people they shouted hosanna Woo hosanna hosanna all right pause someone asked who is that who is that guy walking down the street why are you guys all excited about this person and they looked at him and they said, this is Jesus who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna! Woohoo! Hosanna! Hosanna! Oh my goodness.
goodness, pause. That was probably an amazing celebration, just like right now with all of you. This is an amazing celebration. But it was kind of noisy. Did that hurt your ears sometimes? No. Did it scare you sometimes? No. no. Did it excite you? No. Did it want you to get louder? No. Because you were so happy and so excited? Yeah. Yes. And I bet you that's what the people did. Do you think God was sad about that? Yeah. No way. No way at all. It even states it in the Bible that God said, this is the day of the Lord that has made. Let's be glad in it. Isn't that amazing? Let's be glad in the day that the Lord has made. Hosanna! Hosanna! Woohoo! Oh my gosh, pause. Just as those people celebrated over 2,000 years ago, we have come today to celebrate again. So all of you at home who are watching, get outside and yell Hosanna as loud as you can or have an awesome dance party to celebrate Jesus' coming. What an amazing day and what an amazing gift that we can continue to celebrate. You guys, you did an amazing job. Thank you for your help in telling this story. Let's pray. Let's fold our hands. All right, dear God, we celebrate today just as the people celebrated in Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago. This is the day that you have made. We will always rejoice and be glad in it. Hear us now as we join together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you. And immediately as you enter, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden before. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying this colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branch that they had cut from the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heavens. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Good morning. My name is Barry Szymanski. I will be serving you as your bridge minister until you call an interim or a settled minister. Please call me Barry, or if you want to be a bit more formal, Rev. Barry or Pastor Barry, but I respond well to Barry. The job of a bridge minister is to give continuity to a church. Think of what a bridge does on a highway or a street or for a railroad. A bridge keeps the road level, no ups and downs, no steep embankments, no driving through a creek. I envision that my bridge minister's task is to do the same. And therefore, this congregation avoids having a different preacher every week and has a minister that you can call on. Hopefully I can, as your bridge, give some continuity to preaching and serve as your pastor. I am amazed at the extent of the ministries of your congregation. This is an extremely active church. Your monthly and weekly publications and newsletters 
are just full of the activities that you undertake. Your leadership team and spiritual ministry have been supportive to me, and Amy and Jennifer, by the way, great individuals, have been super helpful and accommodating to me as I get acclimated, as have Carl and Luke. I will continue to rely on them, and please call on them for whatever you need. Should you have any questions, contact your moderator, Bob Johnson, or your lay leadership team. I understand you may want to know something about me. I'm a second career minister, having been ordained in the year 2006 in the congregational tradition. My first career was that of a lawyer, and I practiced law for over 46 years. I started as a trial lawyer and then began to emphasize business law and estate planning. When I began, began seminary in 2000, that ended my trial law practice because then I realized that a trial lawyer cannot officiate at a service, a wedding, a funeral, a baptism, without having possibly someone in, in the congregation that would be on the other side of a case. My wife's name is Sue, and we've been married 53 years. We live in a condo in Brookfield. We have one daughter, Sarah, two wonderful grandchildren, Eddie, age 11, and Opal, age 9, and a great son-in-law, Dave. I often wondered, prior to being a grandparent, why everybody said their grandchildren were wonderful. And I realized, well, grandchildren are wonderful, and it's just wonderful to let them go home at the end of the day and for us to relax at home by ourselves. As your bridge pastor, I'm here for you. So if you have any questions, please don't think you're bothering me. I'm here to help you. I'm also available to pray privately with anyone or to chat about anything that you want to talk about. We can do so after church or by telephone. What I hope in the future is to preach on Jesus' resurrection, of course, at Easter, and then for the two Sundays afterward, because Easter is essential to who we are as Christians. After that, I hope to preach on what is church and the essentials of Christianity, the essentials of what it means to follow Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is my intent to help prepare you for your interim minister and followed by your call to a settled pastor. Today's gospel is taken from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. Much takes place between the lines of that gospel. Jesus had been preaching for some years in Galilee, Samaria, and Judea, the lands northeast of Galilee, and the lands across, across the west of the Jordan River. People flocked to him to hear his message of the kingdom of God, which Jesus stated clearly was near. And as we read the gospel, we realize that during his ministry of healing and preaching, he made enemies vicious enemies. As this peaceful man approached Jerusalem for that Passover, people heard that he was coming. His enemies knew this, and they wanted to destroy him. They wanted to silence him. Now, during Passover, the Israelites from all over traveled to Jerusalem. And throughout his own life, Jesus himself together at his early life with Joseph and Mary, we traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover. We know this because the Gospels tell us this. During Passover, the religious authorities were ready for the religious observance. But this year, what they were not ready for, nor looking forward to, was Jesus coming to Jerusalem. Why? They craved their authority. They cherished their power. They prized their glory, and they treasured their personal kingdom. Now, we know at that time that Israel was occupied by the Romans, and what the Romans desired above all, other than taxes, was peace. And their reason was very simple. If a territory was peaceful, then what happened is the taxes were paid as tribute to Rome. And the Romans knew from past experience that the Jewish people really, really wanted their freedom. So any large gathering of Israelites, like his Passover, was an opportunity for trouble. And Passover, because it was a huge gathering, prompted the 
prompted the Roman soldiers and Pontius Pilate to bring additional troops to the garrison in Jerusalem. They did not want any civil disorder. And it was obviously no different that year. But the spark of this year, the spark of the year that we're talking about was the fact that the itinerant preacher from Galilee, from the northern territories, was coming to Jerusalem and he had the astounding fact of, having, of gathering people around him. And that, for both the Jewish authorities, religious authorities, and the Romans, was a problem. When Jesus approached Jerusalem, the crowds, the populace, came out to honor him. Mark's Gospel tells us that Jesus rode into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, a colt. There are two viewpoints on why Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a, dump, on a donkey. One viewpoint is that this was an act of humility by Jesus. The other viewpoint, however, is that it showed, it, it was a conquering, excuse me, the other viewpoint was that all conquering generals rode into lands riding on a donkey, a colt. And the reason they did so is because horses at that time were hard to control. The last thing a general wanted was for a horse to buck and throw the general to the ground. So we have two viewpoints. One viewpoint emphasizes Jesus' humility, and the other says that he entered Jerusalem as a conqueror a conqueror for God's kingdom. Now, we can look at Jesus then, the humble person or the rock star. And regardless, when he did arrive, riding on the colt, people threw down their robes in his path. They spread palm branches to exalt him as they shouted. And you can almost hear the crowds loudly calling out, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. You can easily imagine the dread of the religious authorities. The appalling danger to their power, to their glory, to their treasury, and to everything they valued. Worse for them, looking over their shoulder, was the fortress Antonio with the Roman governor, and all his soldiers. Now, Pontius Pilate, as I said, recognized there could be problems because of this man from Galilee, that the peace of Rome could be disturbed, and this could not do. So later on in that week, on Thursday night, the authorities arrested Jesus. He was imprisoned, tortured, made fun of, falsely accused, then condemned to die. He was forced to carry his own cross and nailed to that cross. This was a man who changed people. His very life changed people. This was a man whose healing changed people. This was a man who, when he forgave their sins, changed people's lives forever. Those who heard him announce that God's kingdom was near were transformed. They were born again. Because Jesus lived in divine love, he shared that divine love with everyone he met. And while dying a horrific death on the cross, he proved his faith and his trust and his hope in God the Father. While he was in agony on the cross, Jesus prayed Psalm 22. I would like to read selections of that psalm prayer to you. The first words of that prayer are those you're very familiar with. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It is those words which lead some to believe that Jesus was in the depths of despair. However, there's another way of looking at it. When a person sings or hums just the first line of a song, we can often guess the tune, the tune that that person is humming. There are popular TV game shows based on this. And the same happens when someone announces the first line of a psalm. Then the listener can recall and then pray the entire psalm. So if Jesus in his agony called out the first line of the psalm, then he was praying that entire psalm. 
Psalm 22 begins with despair, but it changes. It progresses as it moves along from the depths of despair, as it climbs to the mountain of hope and trust in God the Father to lead to our redemption. Allow me to read lines from Psalm 22. I invite you this week, if you have a chance, to read Psalm 22. Read it slowly, read it out loud, and just absorb, absorb that prayer. This is the prayer that Jesus prayed on the cross to give him hope. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, they trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am scorned by others and despised. All who see me mock at me. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver you. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me. There is no one to help. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. A company of evildoers surrounds me and circles me. My hands and my feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away. O oh my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. This is where the psalm begins its turn, its turn toward hope in God as Jesus continues to pray. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. But he did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise, my vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down, before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for them. This last part of the psalm is what I believe Jesus knew what his role was as Christ to the world as the psalm continues. Posterity, and this is Jesus on the psalm, posterity will ser serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Saying that he has done it. Every time I read and pray that psalm and think of Jesus on the cross, I see this turn from anguish to conviction, to reliance, to rescue, to deliverance by the Christ, to freedom from all of us. Freedom for all of us. Because of God the Father's love for Christ and Christ's love for us, we can, through our faith and trust and hope in Jesus, live in God's kingdom now. Our life, your life and my life, can be a life of joy, a life of joy in Jesus, a life of inner peace, 
a life of forgiveness, all while we trust in God and hope for an eternal future with him. Amen. In our pastoral concerns today, we have a prayer request from Jean Roche. She'd like to start a prayer chain to pray for her great nephew, Seth, his wife, Maria, and their unborn baby, affectionately called Bean, that has a tumor growing on the outside of its back. It is 99% that it is not cancerous, but it does create some health issues and the baby will need surgery right after birth. They're asking for all the prayers that they can get. So let us pray. Lord our God, during this week, this holy week, we celebrate your son's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. On Holy Thursday, we join with your son when Jesus and his friends celebrated the Passover in that upper room. On Good Friday, we remember your son's death on the cross. Father, we bring our prayers to you for there is trouble in our society. Death stalks. Death stalks just as it did 2,000 years ago and death does not give up. Father, we, your people, are afraid. It seems that bad news is constantly announced. Father, we often feel, feel that we are losing our present and our future, our very lives. So in prayer, we bring all of our fears, our fears of discontent, of despair, our fears of defeat, 
of despondency. We give ourselves to you, Lord, because there is nothing to hold on to except you. And we realize this because that is what Jesus did on the cross to his glory. Father, we pray to you as we seek your loving protection, the protection that comes not from this world, but from you. Lord, we pray with your son Jesus as we lift up the cup of salvation and call upon your holy name. We pray that you give us your divine light to see our lives unadorned and uncompromised. We pray that you grant us mercy that we may be refreshed and reborn. We pray that you give us courage to encounter our wilderness while we journey to the promised land. Grant us your peace, Lord, to live abundantly and joyously and eternally. We pray for all of this to you, the God of our exodus, together with your Son and in union with your Holy Spirit. Let us now pray that Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen.
let us prepare our offerings to this local church and to our special ministry this month. In March, loose coins in the offering are designated to Lake Area Club. You are asked to place your generous donations through our online giving, the postal mail, or by dropping it off in our church office. Let us pray. Lord, we offer ourselves to you, who we are and what we do. We also offer what we earn so that your church may bring your kingdom on this earth as it is in heaven. Lord, accept us and what we gift to this church in your name. Amen.
May the God of every grace and blessing grant you peace and joy. May you rejoice in God's protection today, tomorrow, and for all time into eternity. May you be blessed by God the Father, Jesus the Christ, who suffered and died for us, and the Holy Spirit always among us to lead us forth to do the best that we can. And now may we take the blessings and the gifts that we have received from God and share them with others, for blessings and gifts are never meant to be kept, but always meant to be shared. Go forth in peace. Amen.